So a lot of the comments on my recent Stalingrad video haven't been about Stalingrad, but have been about the current health and economic crisis that we are going through. So, you know, it's nice to know that my videos are a distraction during these bad times. And, you know, people were saying that, thank you, Tick, uh, for reminding us that no matter how bad things are or are going to get, because the economic crisis has only just begun and it's going to get a lot worse, um, no matter how bad things do get, it won't be quite as bad as Stalingrad. You know, because slightly better than Stalingrad is good, apparently. Um, so, yeah. In these trying times, I think the best thing to do is educate yourselves. So what I'm going to do is recommend two things for you. One, you take a look online on about the 77th Brigade. The UK's 77th Brigade. If the UK has got one of these things, by the way, it's most likely that other countries have as well. And once you've done that, what I'd also recommend is that you get a hold of a copy of George Orwell's 1984 and uh, read it cover to cover five times over. And yeah, if we are not living in a George Orwellian nightmare, we're pretty close to this point. So before this video gets taken down by the UK's 77th Brigade, um, let's progress on to some of the comments and questions that were raised in my recent Stalingrad videos. Raphael Nafaronovich, probably butchered that, has asked, what is the point of Langerman's corps with one division? Why not disband this mess? Why one division need corps command? Love the show. Anyone who's worked in a corporation or anywhere where there's a hierarchy or let's say retail, something like that, where you're a manager or you're a, um, a leader of some sort, and you've got teams below you, and you're managing these separate teams, you'll know that actually if you have too many teams, you're going to be overwhelmed. And if you've also played Crusader Kings 2, or something similar like that, you can see the same principle there. It's like, oh, you know, let's say you're a lord or a, a king, you might have a few plots of land, but if you have too many, or you have too many vassals, it gets overwhelming and, and whatever else. So the purpose is that, you know, uh, in, the t in Crusader Kings 2, let's say you're a king, you might have two or three dukes, right? And then you have a bunch of counts. If you have too many vassals, if you get rid of the dukes and you just have a load of, of um, counts, which are below the dukes in theory, if you have like 20 of them, you're going to be overwhelmed. But if you've got one king with three dukes, let's say, and then they have five or whatever counts beneath them you can manage it better and that's the point of the hierarchy and it's the same principle here with Langerman's core it's not so much what Langerman's doing um you know he only has one division he might have other units I didn't mention that he might have had an extra couple of units uh, let's say engineer battalions or whatever or artillery units behind it but let's say he's got one division and, and you, you know you, you're right to point out that seems a bit silly but what he's doing is by taking that one division off heights or off sidelets or whoever else, I think it's Silas Corps has got two divisions. It's also got a bunch of uh, engineer battalions and regiments and artillery regiments and whatever else. So he's got a lot to deal with. And so if Langerman can take one extra division away from him, that's brilliant. That frees up a little bit uh, sidelets to do you know more work with those couple of divisions that he does actually have. So I hope that makes sense. It's it's about taking the pressure off the units. And I also mentioned this, you know, uh, Von Weichs, he's got like six armies to deal with, you know, and some of these are massive and they're also um, the non-German as well. You got Romanians, you got Italians and, and Hungarians and then German armies as well. So he's got a lot of work to do. And that's why Hitler was like, well, maybe we should make an extra army group, right? And the reason why is because that would make an extra rung above you above the, the armies and take pressure off Vikes. Well, it's the same principle here, uh, uh, taking pressure off of the attacking units. So Langman's Corps it might seem a bit silly just having one division, and it's probably right, but that takes a lot of pressure off heights and sidelets. So Nathan Von Dutch has said, I always find it so horrid to see all these icons on the map, them being armies and units, and then here, this unit or army was destroyed. Thousands of deaths. Insane. I wanted to highlight this comment because it's very easy to lose perspective. 
we're seeing these units move around the map and shooting at each other and whatever else, we don't see the human side of it. It's very, very hard to imagine, like, you know, each one of these is thousands of people in just that little unit there. And so we, we have to remind ourselves, yes, these are thousands of people and many of these are getting wiped out. And what you're not seeing is that many of these already on this screen that you're seeing right now are already depleted. You know, especially on the Soviet side at this stage of the battle, they are down to a, few, a couple of thousand men each, you know, from 10,000 men. And the Germans are also, they've lost a few thousand men and they're going to lose many more as this battle progresses. And it's, we've got to remember this. So I think, you know, Nathan Von Dutch and his comment, it's, it's vital that we remember this because, yeah, when you hear that one unit or 10 have died, that's 10,000 or 100,000 men wiped out in uh, in the space of, in some cases, a few days. Alex May said, Tick, I know this is probably better for a Q&A video, but I am a bit confused about the circumstances of Hitler's decision to divert Hot's 4th Panzer Army south instead of keeping them alongside 6th Army to take Stalingrad. Could you elaborate? Okay, this is a good question and it's worth highlighting, so let's take a look at a map. So we have Paulus moving into the Don Bend area, and Hot is north of the Don and near the Donitz River area. Hot crosses south, uh, and as he is doing that, he's then diverted towards Stalingrad. Now, the question is, okay, why didn't he just pull back and go to where Paulus was and then attack with Paulus towards Stalingrad? Okay, if we jump back to the July period and add in the railway lines, you might now begin to see why. So Paulus is heading from Milarovo towards Stalingrad. He's getting his supplies from Milarovo and that area. And the way that German logistics works is the trains would come to the station, they would offload their supplies, and then from the train station to the front line, you would have a series of columns of either horses and carts, or in rare occasions, you'd have trucks. The Germans had to keep close to the railway lines. If they went too far, they would overstretch their truck and uh, horse and cart supply columns. So they were really working from the railway lines. And right from the beginning of this series, which is late July period, Paulus is struggling to keep his troops well supplied and well stocked, and he's complaining about this constantly. So Hot at that time is about northeast of uh, Rostov. He's kind of in between Stalingrad and Rostov at that time. He's just crossing the river. And so the option is, okay, he could turn around and go back sort of the way he came, but towards Paulus. And that would kind of make sense from a maybe tactical point of view. But all he would do is add to the logistical issues of getting those supplies from the Milarovo area. I don't think they could have supported both armies in that area uh, from the Milarovo base, or if they did, they probably wouldn't have been able to get much further than the Don River. But even if they had managed to get to Stalingrad, they would have been massively undersupplied, and there's no way that they would have won that city. So when Hot crosses over the river and he's, and he's uh, diverted towards Stalingrad, he's actually advancing along the railway line. That's what he's doing. And this is why it's vitally important that he takes the stations at Kotelnikova, then Abganyerova, and then Tingutta. I think I mentioned, I think it was episode 8, that he has to take Abganyerova station area because he needs the supplies. And this benefits the Germans once they get to Stalingrad because they can ship their supplies along the railway line to almost to Stalingrad. I don't think they go into Stalingrad, but they go almost into Stalingrad and they can supply their forces a lot easier. But even when they do get into Stalingrad, they are suffering from supply shortages, even with this railway line more or less secured. So if Hot had been with Paulus south of the Don River and had gone that way, there's no way, there's no way that they would have been able to supply those two armies. And this is why I discourage you from viewing the battlefield like you would a chessboard. This is not a chessboard. You know, if we look at this purely from a tactical point of view, yes, it might make sense for Hot and Paulus to strike together towards Stalingrad. That might make sense. But as soon as we factor in those logistics, it no longer does. 
So the next couple of questions go together, so I'll read them out. Chibi Chats says, Hi Tick, loving this series. Maybe you could answer a question of mine. Why were all the Axis allies in Army Group South? If they were not as well equipped or respected by the German army, why did they not send the Hungarians, for example, to Army Group North and free up some of the better German units for Army Group South? And Grandorn said, instead of creating a new Romanian army to strengthen the front, it really would have been a better idea to recall Manstein's 11th Army from the Leningrad area. They did that when it was too late. The Germans actually wanted to perform offensives on three strategic axes, third being the Leningrad front. But the difference is that the offensive in the south had decisive strategic goals and benefits, while the one in the north was planned simply because capturing Leningrad was a top prize for Hitler's ego. In an old video of mine about German reinforcements for the Sixth Army, um, what I discussed was this idea that Army Group South was neglected, to some extent, with the reinforcements, um, and that's Army Groups A and B. And the reason why is because it seems that Hitler and the High Command expected a counterattack in the Moscow and Rzhev area. Now, there did end up being some, but um, not to the same extent. They probably overdid it. Um, so reinforcements weren't going south. Uh, but you can think, well, wait a second, if they're going to, if the Soviets are, you know, or the Germans are expecting an attack in the, in the middle of the front, then placing these Axis allied armies in the middle of the front would be bad. And so that is probably not a good option. Um, could they have gone to Leningrad? Maybe. Um, my point would be this. If you look at a map of Europe, you'll see that Hungary and Romania and especially Italy. I mean, what the Italians are doing on the Eastern Front in the first place, I have no idea. But, you know, these these guys are mainly in the south of Europe. And so it makes sense to have them fight in the south. They might be better acclimatized or, or, or whatever. But the original plan was to send Manstein's 11th Army into the south, actually into the Caucasus. That was part of the original plan. Now, this gets changed and, and they go north and... You know, maybe maybe they're like, oh no, maybe we don't need that because they thought the the Soviets were collapsing earlier on, so maybe it made sense to go north. Um, I also think that part of the reason is because you've got all these Axis armies going south, the you know German and Allied, and I think logistics comes into this. So you have Paulus and Hot and all these other guys complaining that. They haven't got enough equipment, they're not getting enough supplies, they're running out of ammunition, they're running out of fuel. Uh, there is only one train line from Rostov to the Stalingrad area, and all this other stuff. So, yeah, it makes sense that, okay, we probably can't supply Manstein's army if it goes south. When you get Operation Uranus and Sixth Army gets surrounded... The Romanians are basically wiped out for the most part, and the others are in trouble. But you have Sixth Army, which at that point is basically two armies trapped in Stalingrad. So a lot of the supplies that would have gone to the Sixth Army and Fourth Panzer Army are now not going there. So Manstein now has the ability to go south, get extra units sent to him, etc., because they can now supply them because. You've got this huge army, the 6th Army, which consists of, you know, there's a load of different units in it, more than the 6th Army. So they're trapped in Stalingrad. They're no longer being supplied or very little supply is getting through to them. And so this free, this frees up the supplies and logistics situation in the south to then send units to there. And that's when Manstein can probably raise a new army. I also wonder if that is actually the reason why... We'll get to this. I don't know. Maybe we'll check it out when we get there. But maybe that's why Manstein didn't get the reinforcements he needed, because perhaps uh, the logistics simply wasn't there. Um, but that, I think, is the reason why Manstein wasn't sent south. It's mainly because of the logistical situation more than anything else. Native Guardian has said, To be honest, I do not get it completely. It is obvious that the German generals and powerless claim to have been outnumbered massively, but the ground situation shows an almost permanent advantage of the Wehrmacht, tanks, air raids, and so on. So what were they on about? 
please answer me, it is ugging my mind, thanks. Yes, it definitely ugs the mind. Uh, you know, when you hear that, you know, the Germans are outnumbered at every single point, and then you look at the details of it, like which is what we are doing, and you find that that's actually not always the case, or not really the case. And uh, it's interesting, isn't it? And the reason for this is because the Soviets are sending reinforcements in drips and drabs, and they are, for one reason or another, maybe through desperation, being or perhaps they're just being caught off guard, they're being forced to commit some of these reinforcements. And so they are, in a sense, they're not really, but in some ways they are wasting uh, these reinforcements. So you can imagine it like this. Let's say the Germans start off with 10 people in a group uh, and, and they're fighting away and, and the Soviets send in like three people. Well, that German 10 are going to destroy the, the, the Soviet three. Right, so the Soviets send four people along next time. It's like okay, so the Germans defeat them again, right? And then the Soviets send five people in. Oh look, the Germans win again, and maybe they lose one or two people in this. It's like well, the Soviets outnumbered the Germans. Well, no, they didn't, right? No, they didn't. Not at any one moment in time. Yes, they sent more, right? They sent was it twelve? Quick math. They uh, they sent you know twelve people in which is more than the Germans had at the beginning, but the Germans have 10 people there. So they all, yeah, it's like, so if you look at the wider picture, it's like, yes, the Soviets had more troops, but they didn't send them in all at the same time. And this is the point that I was making a while back, and apparently this means that I don't understand what being outnumbered means. Anyway, um, don't spit out your coffee. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> uh, you know, this is what I'm. This is what I'm saying. Like when you look at the actual battle, and this is why I'm doing going through it in chronological order, and showing you what as best as I can the units and the battle as they happen. Because when you do this, you start going, wait a second, this whole narrative doesn't actually add up. Now, yes, the Soviets did have more tanks at parts of the Battle of Stalingrad. Somebody was saying that I shouldn't emphasize the tanks, but the reason why I'm doing that is because people like tanks, stick to tanks, but also. I don't always have the um, the manpower numbers. If I can get the numbers for the, the divisions, I'll do that. But in a lot of cases, they don't even mention it in the book, so I can't do it. But the point is like, you know, oh, they had 500 tanks or whatever at Kalach. It's like, yeah, but they didn't send them all in at one go. In the next season, I've been working on the script for that. You'll see the same thing again. It's like, oh, they had so many tanks. It's like, yeah, but the drip, dra drips and drabs. And, you know, over a course of many days, the Germans have, are able to use all their tanks in one go and just destroy and, you know, and then combine the arms warfare with the guns and the uh, flat guns and the Stukas and whatever else. They can easily overwhelm these small drips and drabs that are coming in. And it's the same with the riflemen. It's the same with a lot of other stuff. And really, this is why Operation Uranus, when it finally happens, is such a, a great uh, turnabout. Because the Soviets finally, you know, for the first real time, are able to outnumber their enemies and uh, they, they mount a successful operation, probably because of that. There's a lot of other factors going into this. I'm not just saying it's the numbers, you know, on its own. If people will misinterpret this, this does not mean I'm anti-German or pro-Soviet or anything like that. But as a whole, yes, it is true that when you step back and look at the broad picture, it's like, yes, the Soviets did send in more troops... But in reality, these are coming in in small amounts and they are getting overwhelmed. Now, you can't see it in the videos that I've done so far properly. You'll notice that I have shrank the Soviet divisions down slightly because the Soviet divisions were smaller. And so you'll hear in a lot of the older books, um, like Hapt, for example, he's like, oh, look at how many divisions we were facing. Yes, Hapt, but those divisions weren't the same size as German divisions and so on. Um, and a lot of them were even less than that. Uh, you know, as you'll see next season, some of them have only got three or four thousand troops in them. So for the Soviet side, so I've shrunk that down, but you can't really notice it all the time. But the point of the matter is that you know you see all these divisions, but they're not full, and they're not. When you look at the actual numbers, it's like no, that both sides you know either had similar numbers or you know maybe one side has slightly more, um, and and. Again, they're not being sent in all at the same time. And in a lot of cases as well, you know, there's entire areas of the front where there'll just be a few divisions on one side being, you know, 
holding back an entire force from the other, and then the, you know the Germans will be concentrating elsewhere, breaking through a part of the front where there's fewer units. So it's a lot more complicated than just the raw numbers. And yeah, it maybe it does undermine that some of these authors in the older days were coming out with this idea that you know you're going to get outnumbered. The reality is a lot different, and that's why. I believe going through battles in chronological order as we are doing um, and really diving into the details gives you a much better perspective than stepping back and looking at um, a broader picture. I think this is important. That's why I do it. And that's why I'm not willing to skip ahead and try not to talk about things that are coming up. Um, even though we know that the, the Soviets will eventually win the battle, it's it's nice to kind of see it progress um but anyway i think it's worth as well emphasizing the fact that these guys are the ones who have made this series possible i don't say it enough in the videos so i'm going to say it now thank you guys patrons and subscribe starians for making this happen if you guys want to support links in the description i'll leave it there thanks for watching and subscribing and supporting bye for now